Do I think that Tyler Croft will step it up this year? Good question, Life Hacker. I think I think he has a chance. Um, I wasn't. If you've been listening to me for a while, I really wasn't big on Tyler Croft. I was kind of mad actually when they drafted him. Um, but I think from what I've heard, Andy Dalton's been going to him a lot. I think that Croft could potentially be like a secret weapon. Um, obviously, they feel like he still has something to provide for the team. I think he's a good dual threat guy. Um, but I don't know if Andy Dalton was just hitting the guy up because he's never really thrown to him before or if it's, you know, he's a secret weapon and he's always open. I mean, I would understand why he's always open too when you're playing with a John Ross, A.J. Green, you know, other guys. But I'm, to be honest with you, I'm more of a Uzoma guy. I'm definitely a, a, a um, C.J. Uzoma guy. And it's crazy because I was mad when we drafted Uzoma too because I didn't know who the guy was. But I think Uzoma has a lot of potential. He had some key drops last year. Um, but I think that Uzoma can definitely do his thing. Now, another thing to think about is Mason Shrek has been inserted now, too. And I think Marvin Lewis said that he's um, had a pretty decent uh, mini camp and everything like that. Is he going to be somebody that can possibly uh, challenge one of those guys? I don't know. But I think Croft, you know, depending on how his preseason goes, definitely can be a guy that can come in and do his thing. You know what? I feel like putting some, some rookies in. But, yeah, I appreciate the questions, man. I like doing it this way and hearing what you guys have to say because this is, this is pretty dope. Um, I know that this is my first time doing this, so hopefully it'll grow. But um, what do you guys think of this format? Let me know Let me know some comments on there on how you think about this format and me using it. You think that this is cool or would you like to see, like, the audio-only kind of stuff? Obviously, we're going to keep John Ross in. Let's just, let's just play around and say that A.J. Green gets hurt. And we're going to put in Josh Malone definitely came in. Well, let's, let's put uh, let's put John Ross up there. Let's put Josh Malone in. Let's just see what the future looks like. Let's put your boy Tyler Crop in. Mason Shrek, they made him so garbage. 47 overall. Alright. Oh, um, if you guys didn't catch it, who do you guys think, um, who do you guys think from the wide receiver core uh, will get cut this year? Do you think Alex Erickson will? Do you think, you know, Cody Core will? Oh, do you think that this could actually be a make-or-break year for Marvin Lewis? I think that it can. Um, and I say that because I think Marvin is definitely on the hot seat. Uh, he's lucky to still have his job after last year, in my opinion. Um, there wasn't really a sense of urgency with him. He definitely has that relationship with Mike Brown, but him not being, him not being given an extension definitely shows the writing on the wall for him. Um, I think Andy Dalton said something like players aren't really thinking about it, but a lot of the players actually do like Marvin Lewis, and I know from um, you know one of the stars on the team that some of them didn't believe that last year was Marvin Lewis's fault. Now I'm a fan. I'm you know just going off of what I saw on the field and the performance that I saw last year, and some of the decisions that were made with like you know, older guys being played over younger guys, which I feel like that has to do with Marvin. Um, I think that, you know, Marvin had a bad year. But, you know, listening to some of the players, they actually thought that, you know, some of the moves ownership made last year in terms of not keeping Reggie Nelson and, you know, not doing what they could, which I feel like they did what they could to try to keep um, Marvin Jones. But, a lot of them felt like they should have dished out more money in free agency to keep some of those guys. Um, so I do think, in my opinion, I think that it's definitely a make or break year for Marvin. Um, Marvin is, I mean, he's had 15 years, man. And when you have a team like this that's so talented, and I mean, I feel like definitely, definitely with the type of draft that they just had with Joe Mixon and, you know, John Ross, I mean, there's no excuses. 
So, yeah, I think this is definitely a make-or-break year for Marvin Lewis. He definitely has to come through this year. I don't think that there's going to be any kind of exception for that. And if they come out and struggle, um, it's possible that Marvin could be let go earlier. I mean, I well, actually, I, don't, I take that back. I don't think Mike Brown would fire Marvin Lewis midseason. I don't think that that would happen. He has too much respect for him. And, you know, if that did happen, I don't know where the Bengals would go in terms of their coaching. Um, I don't know if Paul Gunther would take over. They seem to like a, a internal secession plan, but it's like everybody's job is on the line because if Marvin Lewis does go, you know, does his staff go with him? What happens to Ken Zampezi? What happens to Paul Alexander? You know, uh, that stability factor would definitely be gone. Like, if Marvin Lewis was to get fired, let me ask you guys this. Who would you think would be able to replace him? Do you think that the Bengals or Mike Brown would go outside and hire somebody outside? Or you think that it would be like a Paul Gunther, you know, promotion or something like that? If he leaves, who do, who do you think can replace him? If he does leave, I think... Um, I think Paul Gunther would replace him. Just based off of what the Bengals kind of do, I think Paul Gunther would possibly be a replacement. Um, you know, there's been talk, John Gruden maybe. Um, depending, I think that the Redskins extended Jay Gruden, right? So I don't think Jay Gruden would be on the radar. Um, Hughes up in up in Cleveland. And I don't know how much Mike, or what Mike Brown really thinks of Hughes because he wasn't really ready to put that stipulation in of the coach and waiting thing. Um, so, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If I had to take a guess, though, I'd say Paul Gunther. But will Paul Gunther leave? If Paul Gunther left, ugh, it, it, gets, it gets tricky. It gets tricky. I really don't, I really don't know outside of Paul Gunther. I mean, I think that the plan was really, I, from what I've heard, uh, I know that Mike Brown really liked Vance Joseph, but obviously Joseph is now the head coach of the Denver Broncos. So I don't know where where Mike Brown would really go with his coaching decision. And that's, and that's the Marvin Lewis dilemma. If it was me, though, and I'm just talking from a fan, fan perspective, if it was me and I was the GM, I would I would go after Urban Meyer, and that's that's probably something for shock value. But I would go after Urban Meyer. Why not? Why not? Mike Zimmer. Um, of course I would love Mike Zimmer, but I think that that would be a dream scenario because I think that the Vikings love Mike Zimmer. I don't think that Mike Zimmer is gonna be going from Minnesota for a long time. Um, I definitely wanted to see Mike Zimmer be promoted to the head coach while he was here. Um, I think he should have been the guy that was the head coach in waiting. But I think Minnesota, I think they have a good thing going with Zim. He's kind of implementing that, that uh, Bengals culture over there. Um, outside of Macon Treadwell, they've kind of drafted pretty well over there. Um, he's recruited some pretty decent talent over there. And, you know, last year, he basically lost his starting quarterback and still did a pretty decent job. So I think Zimmer, unfortunately, more than likely is going to stay in Minnesota. But what do you guys think about Urban Meyer? I know he's a college coach, but Urban Meyer, I think, would be interesting. And, you know, he's been at some of the camps that we've had. Maybe that will lead to us actually picking more Ohio State players. Who knows? But it's like, you know, what what hasn't um, Urban Meyer really accomplished um, at Ohio State and at the college level? Why wouldn't he want to take a shot at the NFL? And I think that this would be a good a good spot for him. Um, Harbaugh, I think, I think Jim Harbaugh is going to probably stay in college. That would actually be my preference, but I think he's going to actually stay at Michigan. Ooh. 
Hey, and if you guys can, make sure you share this, uh, share the stream um, with your friends and stuff like that, because we can definitely come back and do this again. We're almost, we're going on 48 minutes, and that's, that's combined with what we did last time. Ooh, Josh Malone! Ooh, Malone. That was nice. That was nice right there. But yeah, man, if, um, if that's it, I appreciate you guys coming and dropping these questions off. I know you guys have hit me up on the last stream and, and told me to come back, so I'm glad. I'm glad I did because we got to touch on a lot of topics um, for sure, but let me see. USA Life Hacker says, I don't think so, honestly, because he turned down the Browns head coach job. Browns head coach job. Oh, you're talking about Urban Meyer? Man, who would want to coach the Browns, though? I wouldn't want to coach the Browns. The Browns and Bengals are two different jobs for me. I feel bad that he took the job because to me if Hugh Jackson can't turn that team around nobody can I would never take the Browns job the Browns job is like you're signing yourself up for failure it's like you know that ownership isn't going to do what it takes to take the Browns to the next level you're basically going to have to do everything yourself just recruiting a player to come to the Browns it's like asking somebody to like move to Siberia why why would you do that as an NFL player? Nobody wants to play for the Browns. Look at the guys when they get drafted to the Browns. They don't even want to go there. Corey Coleman last year. Yeah, they're talking about he's a leader and all of that, but did you look at his face last year when he got drafted? That guy did not want to be a Cleveland Brown. I don't think anybody wants to be a Cleveland Brown. If this Brown flush it down. So, I mean, if I was Urban Meyer, I would do that too because what do you have to win and what, what can you really win in that situation? Like... You come from college and then you end up being written off as probably a Steve Spurrier just because you had to be a coach of the Browns. I mean, even Bill Belichick couldn't make the Browns good. I mean, I'll say that, but he did take them to the playoffs, but even he couldn't do anything with that team. And they got rid of him. So it's just too much of... Now, they have, to their credit, they have become a little bit more functional under Hugh. But I just I just can't trust the Cleveland Browns organization, man. If it's Brown flush it down. So you're talking about who wouldn't want this team, though? Who wouldn't want this team? You're talking about a team that has A.J. Green, Andy Dalton. You know, the chips are there. The chips are there. Like, to me, and this is just a wild card, I doubt that this would even happen. But I'll tell you what. If I could handpick a coach to come out of retirement – to essentially put us right into the whole Super Bowl thing, I'd pick Tony Dungy. Tony Dungy. That's who I. That's who I try to pick. He'd be like a wild card, but I think Tony Dungy would be a decent, a decent guy to bring in. Um, I don't know if he'd do it because he's definitely seems to be kind of done with this whole thing. Oh, John Ross. But yeah, that, that's my thoughts there. I don't think anybody wants to be the coach of the Browns, bro. I was surprised Hugh wanted to do it. I think Hugh really only wanted to do that as like a resume booster. Like, if I can do good with the Browns, I can do good anywhere. Like, in order for me to be the coach of the Browns, I'd have to be the owner. I'd have to... <laughs> oh, my God. Like, LeBron James would have to come to every single game. <laughs> um... We'd have to have, like, automatic summer vacations in California. Uh, <laughs> bro, that's like the worst job in sports, honestly. Name a worse job, uh, a job that's worse in sports than the Browns head coaching job. And I'm not even being funny. Like, name, name a worse place to be a head coach at. Like, it's like all odds are against you. Now, he's doing his thing. I'm not even going to lie. He's definitely doing his thing. He's getting players to buy in to, you know, being there and stuff. But, man, if, if Hugh can't do it, whoo. I don't even think Colin Kaepernick would want to play in Cleveland. And he doesn't even have a job right now. Like, they'd have to pick somebody like that. <laughs> they'd have to, like, slim pickings in Cleveland, man. Slim pickings. I'm sorry, I just kind of unloaded the clip on uh, in Cleveland there. Cleveland! Fun times in Cleveland today! Cleveland! Man. 
they definitely deserve, you know, better though. I will say that, even though they're definitely rivals and all of that, I, I kind of feel bad for their friends, man. Cause we've been there, you know. You have to, you definitely have to, you know, somewhat relate to them because the Bengals in the '90s. But we've been spoiled recently with, you know, with winning seasons. You know, we went seven and nine last year, but that was the first time in a while. First time in a while, Mason Shrek is super slow. I don't know how accurate this one is. But yeah, man, um, once again, thank, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I really enjoyed this, doing this Q&A session. You know, even if you guys don't want me to do the Thursday, Thursday podcast like this, I definitely want to make this an official segment. Even if two people show up, it doesn't matter, man. Just spread the word. I'm pretty sure we can get this to, to crank up to even more. But USA Life Hacker and You Ain't. I appreciate you guys coming out, sending me some questions. I really enjoyed talking with you guys tonight. We can definitely do this again. I know that I'll always see you guys on the um, simulated games and everything like that. But for, oh, 49ers. 49ers. Ooh, you think that that's a worse, you think that's a worse job? I don't, I, I can see where you're coming from there. They're definitely in turmoil. But this is the thing. If there's one thing that the 49ers have going for them, is that they have the prestige. Woo! Josh Malone. Is that they have the prestige. You know, and they come from a franchise that has... That did win Super Bowls in the 90s. Um, and they they were a team that, you know, I think five or six years ago, they were just in the Super Bowl. So, it's definitely a tough job. But at the end of the day, you can live in California coaching, <laughs> coaching for the 49ers. So, that's one aspect versus... You know, you living in factories in Cleveland, so. But yeah, I, I agree. That's definitely not a not a great uh, coaching position to to want to have right now, especially with how the stuff went down with Harbaugh and the backstabbing and all of that. But I really think that John Lynch might do a good job there. I think a lot of people are, are kind of sleep on John Lynch, but I like what he did, especially in the draft. But yeah, man. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign out here. I enjoyed doing this. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure um, you subscribe to the YouTube page so you can definitely be in the running for that Ocho Cinco autograph. And I will be uploading this um, to iTunes for the iTunes family. If you want to check out some of this stuff, man, check us out on YouTube or you can listen to the show. Either one. Either way. But if you want to be a part of the, or part of the party, make sure that you definitely check out the YouTube page. Um, I do this in all forms of media, so I don't know if you guys know about DJ Academics, but I'm trying to be the DJ Academics of the Bengals, so I'm trying to hit the podcast waves, the YouTube waves, we're trying to hit every wave, we're trying to hit every wave with this content for the fans, for the fans, you know, from the fan. you feel me, but as usual, I leave you guys with a who day, all day, every day, and especially on Sunday.